Hello and welcome once again to the Mario Kart DS workshop, the most up-to-date tutorial series where you will learn how to mod Mario Kart DS and create your first custom track. In today's part, we will learn the following. How to get textures, model your track, add textures and materials, and export and create the NSBNB and NSBTX. This part is very long, so to make it easier to understand, and for me to edit and release, I will split the four parts into two videos. In this video, I will grab textures, show you around Blender, and make the beginning parts of the model, as well as learning to create materials and textures. Next video, I will get into the nitty gritty stuff, such as making the Bezier curve, finishing the model, and exporting. I also want to apologize for the delay between parts, but I'm rather busy with school, and this part in particular takes a lot to put together. Anyways, let's go! For this part as a whole, you will need Blender, the NNS Blender plugins, and J3D Converter. You might also need EFE, every file explorer for getting textures, even if I said last time that you shouldn't get it, but you'll see. All the download links will be in the description, but I strongly recommend watching part 1 if you haven't already, as it has detailed information and links to all these tools. Without further ado, let's dive into grabbing some textures. So, first things first, you'll need some textures to give your track a nice look. You can use textures from Mario Kart DS, or you can get them from somewhere else, like a side or other games, or you're feeling creative, make your own. There is one small thing you need to have in mind though, and that is that textures can only be powers of 2. By this I mean that textures can only be sizes such as 8x8, 16x16, 32x32, 64x64, 128x128, and so on. Here's a list of all possible sizes that you should use. I will talk more about texture and model limits briefly, but before, let's actually get some textures. For this I will be using every file explorer, which I will link in the description. I know I said it was not necessary for Mario Kart DS modding, but it is good for grabbing textures from it in an easy way, so I only need it for this and previewing the model later on, if you want. First up, Open every file explorer and go into your folder containing the game files that we created last time. Go to the courses folder and select the course text folder of whichever track you like. The folders with text at the end contain the NSBTX files of a course, which store the textures. Next, open the course model.nsbtx file with every file explorer and you shall see this. Search around the file by clicking on the desired texture up here and match it with its palette down here. Otherwise, the texture is gonna look incorrect. Select the texture that you want, and once you match it with its palette, export it by clicking here. I recommend starting out simple and grabbing a road, grass, wall, and star line flag textures. You will encounter many textures combined into one sometimes, which you can also use if you want. If you're gonna go find textures in other games or areas, feel free, but keep the following limitations I will talk about in mind. When it comes to textures, keep the sizes low as much as possible and to the powers of 2. The picture on screen shows many different sizes ranging from small ones like 16x16 to big ones like 256x256. You can also mix and match the numbers to get different width and height. For example, 62x32 or 128x256. Higher size textures should be used sparingly to keep the NSBTX file low on size. The recommended size for this file is 80 to 90 kilobytes, as this leaves space for other textures to display, such as the ones of any objects on your track, like trees, goombas, etc. Be sure to always keep this in mind alongside the amount of textures and their sizes. If you're taking textures from games outside of the DS, be sure to knock down the sizes too. And finally, make sure any textures used are strictly in the PNG or TGA formats. To get them in-game, we will convert them to the Nitro TGA format, which I mentioned before, but this will come at a later time. When it comes to models, there is no hard limit on models, but preferably keep it to a maximum of 1600 to 2000 tries. The DS can only render roughly around 2048 triangles, on the screen at a time. 
and you have to take into account more elements that will appear on your screen alongside your model, such as the characters, cards, items, obstacles, and the skybox. If you go way beyond the recommended amount, there will be issues such as screen tearing and disappearing faces and lines. It's not possible to crash the game with a highly detailed model, but that doesn't mean that you can go ballistic about it. It's important to be resourceful. Again, 1600 to 2000 might seem like an extremely small limit, but if you work around it correctly, you can have more detail than you might think. Now then, with those limits in mind, it's time to get moving. We will start by learning how to model in an easy and efficient way in Blender. When you enter Blender, this is the screen that you will see. You can click out of it and you'll be greeted by a cube, a lamp, and a camera. You can safely delete the last two as they are not needed for Mario Kart DS. Before we actually make a track layout, let's take a small tour of the tabs and controls. Heads up, I will only show you and describe through the most through the areas that we will need for Mario Kart DS. So if you're looking for more things to do with within Blender, there are many tutorials and videos out there in the internet. But you should have known that if you click on this video, so <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's take a small tour. The upper section contains multiple tabs for customizing Blender, and the many functions. Usually, I stick to the default window here, the one that says layout. Of all these, modeling and UV editing are what you will deal with for Mario Kart DS, but you can do everything on this one window just fine. At the top left, we got the mode buttons, the general function buttons, and shortcuts for many of the available things to do in the current mode. You can switch between object, edit and sculpt modes, and vertex, texture, and weight paint. For Mario Kart DS, you will mostly be using object, edit, and vertex, and maybe sculpt if you want to make the terrain in your model seem more natural. The four buttons at the side here change depending on the mode, so don't worry about it for now. The buttons at the left are options to more conveniently work in Blender, such as moving and scaling the model. These also change depending on the mode you are in, but move, rotate, scale, and transform will always be there. At the top right, we got the object list, which is pretty self-explanatory. And over here we got the object type, gizmo, and lots of display options. Object type and gizmo can be safely ignored, and you can disable the latter if you want the menu to be less cluttered. The four buttons here are the viewport shading, which is the way your object looks here in Blender. Wireframe displays the edges of the model, solid displays it all gray, and material preview and render preview preview material settings and textures. At the bottom right, we have the Properties tab, which displays tons of properties for the selected model. There are a lot here, some that not even I know yet, but don't be afraid. You'll only be using three out of all these, Modifier Properties, Object Properties, and Material Properties. You may also notice lots of tabs within these, but they will be explained in due time. At the bottom, we don't notice much. But you'll notice that you can pull up the bottom tab here. If you go to the far left, you can also change what type of tab it is. This can be done with the object list and property tabs too, as Blender allows for a fully customizable workspace. I usually keep the bottom tab at a UV editing tab. You can follow this layout or adjust it all like it suits you best. That's all you can see in the default screen. Of course, I didn't explain everything or not go into too much detail as I want to make it easy to understand and you won't be using a whole lot of what you see there. Next up, the controls. My current control layout is Blender 2.70x, which may or may not be available for you on the settings at Edit, Preferences, Key Map. If it's not there, I will offer a link in the description for the key map, which you can easily import with the button you see here. Once you're more familiarized with Blender, you can go ahead and change controls to your liking, or find whatever shortcuts and buttons were best for you. On the viewport, holding the mouse wheel and scrolling will move the camera. Roll the wheel to zoom in and out. If you hold shift or control while rolling, you'll move up and down and left and right, respectively. Left clicking will select things. Hold shift while you select many things to select them at the same time. 
the X or delete keys will delete things. Ctrl plus C will undo. A will select or deselect all objects, or the current selected one. C will switch between wireframe and solid view. C, the letter C, will enable the circle select tool, so you can easily select many things at once. N will show or hide a tab at the right with multiple options, such as view and tool. This view area is different from the one up here, keep that in mind. T will show or hide the options at the right here. V will enable vertex paint mode on the current object. G will move the selected objects. You can press X, Y, or C to lock it to a specific axis. R will rotate the selected object. Like move, you can press X, Y, or C to lock it to a specific axis. S will scale the selected object that like the other two I just mentioned, you can press X, Y, or C to lock it to a specific axis. Do you get what I mean? Most of these controls also have buttons on screen, particularly the last three, but learning the keyword shortcuts can optimize your workflow. There are many, many more controls, but I will introduce them as we go along. These are the basic ones that you will be routinely using as you create your model. Now let's dive right into what you're here for. Creating your track, finally! First thing you will need is a template to know how big your road and the entire track has to be. If the track is too big, it'll take too long and be very boring. If it's too small, the road may be out awkward to drive around. You always have to keep in mind there will be 8 players running around the course, not all together, but pretty close by. In the description, there's a download to a template that's sized like an in-game card. Import it by going to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. Remember, do not resize this template at all. It needs to be this one size so you accurately know how to scale the road. Let's start by creating a plane. Go to Add, Mesh, Plane. Scale it up by clicking an S and just scrolling in and out to scale it. Depending on the track, you might want to vary the size of the road, but for now, make sure to scale it so the template fits comfortably but with plenty of space. Something like this should be nice. Since you will be working with an open space, press N to pull up the tab at the left and click on View. Where it says Clip Start and N, click on N and change the amount to something high, preferably 100,000. This will prevent the model from cutting off from view as you zoom and move. Now, let's texture our plane. We will also create the material while we're here. Switch to Render View and go to the Material Properties tab. Create a material by, click by clicking on New, then click on Create NNS Material, and delete the first material created. Click on the Material Type option, which by default says Solid Color, and you'll see multiple options for the material type. Usually, you will want to use Texture plus Vertex Color as you'll be using vertex colors to give your model some depth and life. Upon clicking that, click here and look for your texture. After this, you'll notice the plane is pitch black. This is because we're lacking a vertex color layer. You can easily add one by going to the Object Data Properties tab, opening the vertex color menu, and clicking the plus button. Once that's done, we'll see your texture. There are lots of options for materials, but for now, I'll guide you through the ones you will be using the most. The alpha slider here determines how transparent a material is. This is useful for setting how visible a texture is, especially if it has transparency. For now, you won't need to worry about this. The display phase option is really important, as it determines from which side of the model you can see a texture. Front phase means that only the top part of the plane is visible. If you look at it from below, the texture cannot be seen. Back phase means the opposite, the bottom of the plane is visible. Both phases means that both sides of the plane are visible. 
This last option is usually needed for something you can see from both sides, like a fence or a sign. For now, just keep this as front face. Oh, finally, there's the blend mode. This is another thing that helps the transparency of a texture. On opaque textures, like you wrote here, be sure to enable opaque on the options. You'll see the plane is not transparent anymore. With this, we are done for today. Save your blend for next time by going to File, Save, and pat yourself in the back, because you're doing great so far. For now, we know the basic layout of Blender, what are we gonna use, and how to create materials and textures, as well as apply them to our track. Next part will follow up on this, so stay tuned for when we actually model our layout and create a nice track altogether. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask in the comments, and make sure to drop by the Mario Kart DS modeling discord server to know the community, get tools, and ask for help. This link will also be in the description and of all other parts of this series. In the meantime, see you next part!